Hopefully, you now understand what frailty is. So in isolation, it should be clear to see why it matters. But if you take a wider perspective and look across the health spectrum, there are many other aspects to healthy aging that appear similar to frailty. And currently, most healthcare systems are quite new to the concept of frailty and are more used to other types of terminology, such as disability, chronic diseases, and comorbidity. Disability and chronic diseases are two aspects healthcare systems are geared towards. A person presents with a specific problem, a diagnosis is made, and the person is treated or managed for that specific problem. But there are differences between these concepts. The main feature of disability is that it impacts on daily functioning. We are all aware of disabilities that have chronic limitations, such as an amputated leg. But when it comes to frailty, it is more interesting to look at a dependence in mobility, such as needing a mobility scooter as the person is unable to walk anymore, or requiring a chairlift in the home to get up the stairs. Other examples of this type of disability highlight a dependence in activities of daily living, such as needing help dressing or going to the toilet. In comparison, comorbidities indicate the presence of multiple chronic diseases, which for example are the type 2 diabetes, osteoporosis, arthritis or cancers. These don't necessarily impact on daily functioning, but are still relevant to treat and manage. Frailty adds another dimension on the spectrum of the health status of the individual. It is generally seen as a precursor for developing disability, but this is not always the case. Also, some people might have disability, frailty and comorbidities all at the same time, where others might only have one of them. What causes what is also variable, in the sense that frailty may be the cause of disability in some individuals, but a consequence of disability in others. So, let's look at the likelihood of disability and comorbidities in 20 individuals who have frailty. Statistically speaking, around 10 of the individuals with frailty will also have comorbidities. In addition, one of the 20 would have had both frailty and disability. This also shows nicely that these are two concepts involving different individuals. Four people would have had all three elements and therefore likely be at the lowest end of the health spectrum. And that leaves us with five of the 20 randomly selected individuals to just have frailty. Now, these different groups all require a different management of their situation. And the healthcare professional should include these in their assessment of the individual and their plan of treatment. Frailty is one element of it, but shouldn't be looked at in isolation.